Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to another episode of the Proc Talks. I'm your host, Dario, uh, still from quarantine. I'm uh, luckily feeling much, much better than last week. Uh, right after the recording of uh, the Delvoid episode, I was struck down with Corona. Um, first time for me. So I managed to avoid it for a long time. Um, but now I'm feeling a lot better and I'm happy to um, uh, welcome two of uh, uh two members of uh pure reason revolution this time not only john courtney but also greg uh young uh john how do you pronounce your last name <laughs> young you got young. it right first time like 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 a dutch something that it is had, it is dutch my ah. grandfather was dutch <laughs> all right so welcome greg um john we had the pleasure of uh talking with uh, the Prague uh, cast show uh two years back when uh you released Eupnea, right and um back then you I, i remember you telling us that that it was exciting to to uh work with greg again and uh, now he's back as a full-time member even um so maybe we jump we jump right in with the with the tour because that just finished like last week or something uh, you've been on tour here in europe um with uh gaspacho Right. Um, so, yeah. How was that? Was that was that actually the Eupnea tour postponed, 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 or was it kind of a pre above Cirrus tour? Um, I think it was sort of all put together. It was a bit weird. It was like a double album tour, I suppose. Uh, it's because it was postponed so many times. Yeah, we still. I think we still have to sort of pinch ourselves that it actually happened. Um. You know, even up to a few weeks before the German shows, we didn't know if if we were going to be able to to do it. So, you know, but Greg got on his flight from the States. Uh, Greg kind of. <laughs> I had a nightmare with the flights. <laughs> no need for that story. <laughs> but, but you, but you managed to to uh, arrive and uh, yeah. be part of the tour. Yeah, it was great. I mean, we had, um, you know, we, we didn't have very long for rehearsal. And then, uh, you know, we all been sort of trying to figure out all the, you know, this is the first time we've played so many of these songs um, in a live setting. You know, obviously we recorded them, but then uh, it was a new experience to actually bring them to the stage. Um, so it took quite a bit of figuring out just to like, you know, how are we going to do these songs? How's it going to work out? A lot of vocal parts, a lot of, you know, different instrumental parts to, to, to work on. And then, you know, fitting it all together, you know, some of these songs that, you know, like they're not straightforward. <laughs> There's quite a lot to remember. Um, you know, for example, like ghosts and typhoons, that's a, that's a real tricky one to, to get right. And, uh, you know, some massive riffs in there and a lot of different sections. So, um, Yeah, and, and Michael, the drummer, like got some incredible moves to do on that song. Um, so yeah, it was it was it was hard work, but I mean, it was it was so good. Yeah, I think just just add one more little bit. I think after after we finish Utnea, obviously the normal thing is you know band band finishes a record, you go out on tour, but we missed this whole fan feedback. We missed this whole part of this whole cycle of doing an album so it was it was quite strange to go straight back into doing above Cirrus without getting this feedback from the fans you know without playing ghosts and typhoons without playing silent genesis and seeing faces light up it was kind of like okay we can't do live now because covid 19 is here um but what can we do we can go back into the studio of course you know We, Greg works in isolation in Portland. I often work in isolation here in Berlin. Not a lot changes for for our kind of day to day work. So we could we could crack on with doing a new record, and that's exactly what we did. 
Yeah, and uh, Eupnea was was your comeback album after 10 years at that. So so I guess it was like double the frustration maybe to not being able to see the the reaction of the fans live, right? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah, it was this comeback record that we then couldn't couldn't play. We couldn't sort of fulfill the comeback straight away. So you, you had, if I remember correctly, you had one one big big uh, concert at the Midsummer Prog Festival. Like that was the reunion special yeah. gig, right? That at least that happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, Yeah, um, but now you're back with Above Service, as we as we already uh, talked about a lot. Uh, like like we we mentioned the name of the new album a couple of times, and um, I, I think I remember uh, quite clearly with Hypnia with the with the single Silent uh, Genesis and and uh, uh, what was the other one? We already mentioned it. Coast and Typhoon, exactly. Um, I, I think I remember clearly that that. Uh, from what I, I I could tell from the social media reaction, at least that 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 people were eager to and and happy that that, that uh, Pure Reason Revolution is back after such a long time, and um, now you you're continuing this uh, new um, new venture, uh, this new new era of um, Pure Reason Revolution with uh, with the Buffers right after Utnia. Um so yeah, how how is it different to 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 the writing and recording process of Yupnia this time? Was 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 it like straight straight into it without any any uh, any second thoughts? Just just like continuing the flow. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I mean, like like I said, we no show is possible. So into the studio, I think I began demos pretty quickly here in Berlin. And I actually had a flight booked out to Greg in the April 2000, was that probably in the April 2020, wasn't it? And then that, there was this US flight ban. So then obviously this kept on getting put back, put back, put back. So, you know, I cracked on with demos here. I think in the meantime, Greg and I, we, we tried a couple of online collaborations, didn't we? Yeah, we did a few. Well, and I think, yeah, At least one of them, part of it came is is there on on the record. Um, we we didn't find it the easiest collaborating over the internet, but we we tried for it. <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry, like, like I said, we we had this. I think it was the first one. Yeah, the first online session we we worked on what what became our prison, didn't we? Yeah. Um, I think it was Greg's idea when we later did a session in Germany in Frankfurt Oder, we came back to this track and I think it was Greg said, look, this first part isn't so inspiring. Yeah. Let's junk this and let's just have this second part. And I remember thinking it took me a couple, few minutes or maybe half an hour to think, is this going to work? How does this work? Anyway, Greg, you can continue a bit more now. Yeah, so we we had we done this song, and it was definitely there were two sides to this song, um, and I, I don't know something about the first part just wasn't working. But then for for whatever reason, the riffs that we'd got going in in the other part were just like so strong and so like you know. And then it, it it sort of dawned on me like, wait, we could we could just come straight in with this like you know massive thing. There's like we don't need this whole lead in part. So it, it felt kind of. I mean, it was a bit like, oh, what? We're going to scrap this whole part that we've spent so much time on. But I think it was worth doing because, you know, what we ended up with, yeah, it opens the album and it's, I mean, it's, it's just comes in kind of all guns blazing, which is, which is really cool. Yeah. So, 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 so we had this. So, so this is the different sides, I suppose, of the recording. So the, this was the online collaboration we began in light of not being able to travel. And then finally, we sort of found this loophole where the travel bans were down a bit. I'm a British passport holder, so is Greg. And I was able to fly from Berlin to, to the UK, as was Greg from the States. Yeah. And I remember that flight. There were 20 people on a massive Dreamliner plane, which was just bizarre. Um, so I, could, I had my pick of the seats. <laughs> 
um, but switch. yeah, it was like, and it was that it was that that time where you know you were visiting people, and I remember we stayed at my parents, and uh, I didn't hug them for a whole week, just sort of like looked at them from across you know the garden or whatever. So it was a really really odd time. Um, but it was really fruitful. You know, we definitely just, you know, came up with so many good, good songs, so much, you know, so much good stuff. And, and Chloe was there as well, which was like, it was just sort of, it, you know, during that time, it felt bizarre to actually be together with other people. So it was pretty, it was pretty amazing to be able to do that. Yeah. So, now, so yeah. Well, now, I, I think in talking a bit more about the process, you know, we had these few days with Chloe um in the new forest in the uk and then i think w- with chloe's vocals you know that that sort of was a similar process to you really you know she she was working remotely on that anyway so you know vocals would get sent over to chloe she would sing those and they get sent back so nothing hugely changed in terms of process with the vocals with chloe yeah uh but you did did have at least that one one session, uh, all three of you <laughs> together. Yeah. yeah, and then we we ended up having another session. I don't know. Fast forward another six months or something, and Greg came to to Germany. He came to not to Berlin but to Frankfurt Oder, where which is where I I sort of had this garden, um, and then also had a small studio space there. So Greg came for sort of it was mainly vocals we did there, wasn't it? And sort of yeah, we'd got most of the tracking completed. Um, you know, it was such a huge session of ideas and and you know filling out the the arrangements in the initial part. So then you know a lot of the you know kind of coloring it all in, making sure that everything's working happened in between. Um, and then yeah, a massive vocal session for sure. Um, and we set up, uh, you know, it was a, quite a small studio that, that John has out there. And so we, we set up this vocal booth and, um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was a great time. It was, again, it was like, <laughs> we've been trying to make this, you know, this other trip happen for quite a stretch too. So it was, it was cool to be able to finally the, you know, I was able to go to Germany, um, and, uh, yeah, be able to do it. Yeah, Pure Reason Revolution uh, has been about a lot, a lot about uh, you know vocal harmonies from from the very very beginning. Um, so, is there um, when, when you uh, do the arrangements for the songs, uh, do the vocal arrangements take as much time as arranging the instrumental tracks beneath it or around it? <laughs> I mean, it can. Yeah, it takes it takes a while, doesn't it, to get it get it right, and and lots of stuff gets junked as well. You know, you can try stuff that's just sort of block harmonies on the vocal line, and then you think, oh, it doesn't work so well. So then maybe we try some counterpoint stuff, and yeah, it's it's a it's a lot of it's a it's always a, it, with pure reason. It's always a lot of trial and error. Um, and experimentation but it gets there in the end you know it doesn't and some stuff yeah. actually, some stuff takes takes a while longer and then with the parts once we have the parts kind of nailed it's then you know we track up a lot of vocals and that just takes time you know and it's like it, it, it's you know it's just a lot of singing the same parts numerous times to get that rich you know texture that we want um And so it's it's really rewarding, you know, when you get to the end and you hear this whole big, you know, block of of tracked up vocals and with the three voices combining, it's really cool. Um, but it's not, yeah, it's not a quick process. No, we should do some of the things like the, I mean, I'm not saying we're at this level, but I always love the Beach Boys stuff when the, that they did on the box sets where they pulled back like all the instrumentation, maybe just left yeah. Piano or a harpsichord, and you just hear the vocals that just so ridiculously good doing, yeah. doing all the swooping and beautiful harmonizing. But we should do some pulled back stuff, shouldn't we? Where we do just take it down to piano or one guitar, and, right? But yeah. I think actually, and we have a we have a song coming out tomorrow. 
uh, Dead Butterflies off off the new record. And I think, you know, that that's cool because it starts out almost in that way yeah. with, with piano and vocals. Um, and, it, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, it's it's just a cool way to start a song. Um, and, you know, you really hear, you hear the vocals in this, you know, stripped back way. Yeah. And, and I think you you also hear hear that it's uh, pure reason revolution uh, right right away because that's that's your sound that's your thing. Um, how how is it to translate uh, these uh, studio um, arrangements into a live arrangement? Especially now that on, on the last tour you you had Anika Shireen stepping in for Chloe, right? So I guess the, the, all the songs were were new for her. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess that would might have been uh, another um, challenge. <laughs> Yeah, an additional challenge. Yeah, I think it, I think it was a challenge for Anakin because, and there's not only a lot of vocal harmony parts, sometimes lead lines, sometimes harmony, but also a huge volume of lyrics as well to learn. So she did an incredible job doing that. I mean, how does it translate live, Greg? Yes, it's more cut back, isn't it? There aren't fifty. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a little different, of course, but um, you know, but we want to make sure that yeah, the parts come through, the you know, the the parts that people recognize as being, um, you know, the interweaving harmonies and um, you know, all the lines. So I, I mean, I think it works out well. Um, and yeah, there's no doubt, Annika just was incredible. Um, and I, you know, it felt great to be able to, um, yeah, come together in Berlin for these rehearsals before the tour and. You know, it was it was fast and everything was sounding so good straight away. Um, and yeah, she she just proved herself an incredible talent. Yeah. And I think I think live, you know, it it's raw, isn't it? You know, it's it's not 50 tracks of vocals, it's just three of the singing so Yeah, it sounds more rough and ready, but but people want that from live, don't they? They don't want yeah. it. Yeah. Maybe one day we'll clone a lot of ourselves yeah. so that we have A whole choir of <laughs> uh, that's frightening. Let's not Gre do that. Gregs and Johns and Chloe's. <laughs> <laughs> But, well, there's this this uh, hollow um, holograph uh, option. Yeah. Aren't they doing like like uh, shows with I don't know Michael Jackson or Ronnie James Dio? Or <laughs> holograph <laughs> That would be great. <laughs> um no now i kind of kind of lost my my next question uh picturing that <laughs> um yeah uh the third the third single is coming out tomorrow as we record this you, you just you just said it and um Well, looking at the the, at the two post reunion albums, I would say uh, Eupnea and Above Cirrus. Now, I um, realized that there's one song more on Above Cirrus compared to Eupnea, but the uh, in exchange there's not like you know the 13 minute huge song on it, but there's a 10 minute song. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one is called Scream Sideways. And I have to say that is definitely my favorite song. This chorus is just so amazing. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm so excited for people out there, uh, for Pure Reason Revolution fan, longtime fans, and maybe also, of course, new listeners to, to explore it. Um, where were you? Were you able uh, to to play to play any of the new songs on the on the on the tour as well? I don't think we we talked about that yet. <laughs> no. Well, I'm sorry. Yes, we did play a new track, but we we went from not playing the longest track on this record to playing the shortest. We just played Phantoms on this <laughs> tour, but. Yeah, we will definitely endeavor or, you know, come the summer, we've got two festivals. We've got Night of the Prague on the Lorelei and we've got a festival in Poland and we, we shall be playing definitely something else. We'll make perhaps another two from Above Cirrus for that one. What do you think we should play, Greg? What would be your two? <laughs> I think 
Don't be scared to try and scream sideways. <laughs> we definitely talked about playing uh, New Kind of Evil, and I think that one would... I mean, I, I, I'm excited to play that one live because just the way that that, you know, that chunky halftime shuffle kicks in, I'm like, oh, that's going to feel great to hit that. Uh, I think that was, yeah, another big part of playing on tour was it's like that feeling of like hitting the riffs really big it just feels so good on stage. And especially like it shows our, our, our last show in London, people came down the front and were headbanging along and it was it was like a great time, you know, just to be like, yeah, this feels so good. We're you know, these giant riffs, these great rhythms and everyone getting way into it. Um, and so, yeah, I think New Kind of Evil is going to be dead cool to play. Uh, don't, don't you think it's going to be glorious or feel glorious, uh, like having this super heavy, fast riff uh, and screaming sideways and then suddenly explode into this huge, huge chorus where the, where the, where the kind of temp, not the tempo, but the speed is kind of dropping, you know? You know what I mean? That, that, yeah, yeah. that, that must feel so epic. <laughs> that would be a good one. Let's see. We depends how much we want to test ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should we should aim high, shouldn't we? <laughs> but it, but it's wonderful to hear uh, the that the you finally got to see the response of the audience live. Um, I'm 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 a bit uh, sad that I wasn't able to catch the tour, but uh, luckily our newest member of the photograph of our photographic collaborations team, Anna, was able to catch the show in Stuttgart. So uh, oh, you great. Get, you guys out there, if you want to see a couple of pictures, uh, check out our galleries on the um, Some really cool pictures there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, with with Pure Reason Revolution, I always find it really, really interesting um, how you guys manage to sound very modern and very unique in a, in the prog setting still still sneaking in there you know those pink floyd influences here and there very subtly but but overall you know with these huge uh, longer compositions and stuff it's it's obviously very proggy but it is uh in no way um kind of you know dusted and 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 uh, feels like you know old school like uh, like the, the flower kings for example or this these kind of prog rock bands um so i'm always really interested what what you what you are listening to to and what what your influences are maybe maybe specifically outside of the prog world because i feel there's a lot <laughs> oh my word <clears throat> i mean just Something you, you said about the production, I think we always strive to sort of have a modern production value. And I think that by the time we sort of finished with, well, by the time we've got the tracks to a certain level, it's really important to give it to someone like Daniel Bergstrand. You know, he makes the last two records and he, he just knows what he's doing. He knows how to put the drums in the right spot. He knows where the guitar. He just knows where stuff needs to go. We we can get it to a certain level, but he just takes it takes it up a notch and and makes it consumer ready, really. Um, and going and th go on. Yeah, and I think you know we 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 both you know all, all three of us listen to you know all kinds of different music, um, you know a lot of my work is, is, is composing. And so I'm listening to all kinds of different things. And, you know, for example, on this new single, I, I mean, there's parts of it, which to me, I think are heavily influenced by, you know, bands like churches, you know, where it's like this much more electro kind of thing. And, you know, we, I guess part of us is like, Oh, we want to incorporate that into, you know, longer pieces of music. So it's, I think that's a, you know, that's something we allow for. And, you know, we don't want to kind of limit ourselves in terms of, you know, what we're doing sonically. And so I think, we you know we give ourselves the the freedom to explore that and if it if it works with the song then you know it's really cool yeah yeah definitely and i think i think there's 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 core influences on there that that were there right from the start that you touched on dario that you know pink floyd's always going to be in there there's always going to be you know the harmonies thing the, the west coast harmony thing or you know influence from elo But with the same measure, there's always going to be Smashing Pumpkins in there. There's always going to be, yeah, some slight grunge push into it as well. Um, 
I think I think in later years I've my my new music consumption is terrible, really. But if I had to <laughs> some modern rock that I do like, I I am into Bring Me the Horizon. Um, I did some mixes for them years ago. And then that was when they were doing the really heavy stuff with Suicide Season. But I just, I think they've progressed really well. You know, they've turned into this more melodic band. They've pushed things electronically in places. They've, they've developed. And yeah, so I mean, that's a sort of modern new stuff. I mean, Greg mentioned churches. Yeah, great. You know, but if there's electronic stuff we like, you know, that it still goes back to stuff like Massive Attack or even uh, Air. You know, Air is something as well that. I think always has a cheeky influence. Yeah. And there's a definite, you know, Floyd connection with there and, you know, some of those, yeah, there's like, there's, there's one song where it's like, okay, this sounds like Pink Floyd right now. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just listened to the, to Above Service again and there, there was this little, little guitar in the, in a quieter part. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we always Definitely. said ourselves at the beginning it was that we'll have no boundaries really with the instrumentation we want to use, you know, with song arrangements. Um, and that's not changed. That sort of early early mission statement has remained the same really. Um yeah. Speaking of early stuff, I I I I do I do have to ask this question. Uh because I remember uh, Clearly, it's like it's been 15 years or what uh, when the Dark Third dropped, and I think it was something very, very new to the scene. And uh, of course, off that record, uh, the Bright Ambassadors of Morning still stands out it was as one of the definite <laughs> purism revolution tracks um, with a with a really um, very, very special magic. Um, how, how how do you think? Where, where does this magic come from? of bright ambassadors it was it i mean it, it came out of a university project didn't it it was our university project yeah 2002 or just it was <laughs> that was i mean i think it was i mean it was it was what's good about the way that we did it was that you know we had to fulfill this um project but we were driven purely artistically we were driven to make just the best Thing that we could we were inspired at the time by um i remember super furry animals did this album rings around the world and they would did this whole set of videos like dvd with surround sound we were we were inspired to try and just create something that we thought was like ambitious and 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 kind of long i guess but i think it was yeah we just we worked together so well and you know we had We had Chloe's incredible vocals on there too. Um, and it was just, I mean, I don't know. It was, it felt really cool to play it on tour because mm. it's like, wow, we wrote this so long ago. And yet it's like kind of, you know, it's, it's hung around. People love it. People were singing along. Um, and yeah, we, I think we combined, you know, this, these great sections of big riffs, but also, you know, real interesting melodic passages, you know, different harmonics, um movements that you know the that you know give it a real different feeling as you go through the track yeah actually talking about the electronic stuff it's reminding me that one of the sections was quite dj shadow influence from the time as well so <laughs> taking me back to like 2000 yeah yeah uh, yeah Yeah, wonderful. I, I, I mean, I saw. Uh, I think it was either uh, the Amor Vincit Omnia tour or the Hammond Andel tour here in Munich, in the fifty-nine to one small club. Yeah. That was that was such a great gig, and I, I, I really hope I, I, I'll get to see you guys again yeah. uh, very soon. I, I probably won't be able to to make it to the night of the Prague, but we'll see. <laughs> That's a yeah. shame. <laughs> I like that venue in Munich. Though. What's it called? Fifty nine to one. Yes, yes, and the, the, yeah. The, the 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 other the only other band I, I I saw there, or the only other show was actually two bands. It was uh, King's X, supported by Clone from France. Like ten uh, years, what feels like ten years before before Clone really got their break breakthrough. <laughs> But yeah, that was King's X. That was the other band that I saw back then. And 
Um, but obviously they, 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 they do more, um, they're, they're not really programming or booking proggy things, right? <laughs> But both King's X and I think also Pure Re Reason Revolution have, have their fans outside of the prog scene as well, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Uh, thank you, uh, Greg and John, for taking your time to talk here at the Prog Talks. You guys out there, don't forget to check out um, Above Cirrus, the new album from uh, Pure Reason Revolution. It uh, drops a couple of days after this um, This episode is uh, going to be out, uh, namely May, May 6th on Inside Out Music. Uh, follow Pure Reason Revolution on all the social uh, media platforms. We're going to put the links everywhere, including down in the description, as always. Um, so you, you, you will be alerted when there's more live news and all that. Um, also, of course like and subscribe the prog space if you haven't done so and uh we're always uh, grateful for a cup of tea or coffee um to help my voice uh not break during interviews <laughs> <laughs> and to keep me awake because it's early <laughs> yeah, right. it's only 11 a.m <laughs> <laughs> here here in germany it's already 8 p.m um so i'm I'm thinking, what, what, what am I going to do with my evening? Probably. Um, yeah. Listen to some more prog music. Uh, thank, thanks for joining us. Uh, all the best with the release of Above Cirrus. Uh, thank you out there, um, everyone, for listening, for tuning in. Uh, that's it for today. Until next time, take care of yourselves and keep spreading that prog love. The Prog Talks. Produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munoviz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.